shy programmer, not a public speaker, so uh, I'm glad that everyone is good humoring me today as I uh, stumble along. And luckily, I'm not an attorney, so I cannot be disbarred. So if I say anything uh, rude about Scientology, I hope everything is the truth. Um, nothing can happen to me. I don't have to be quite as uh, circumspect as the real attorneys. I've never been a Scientologist. For the last four years, I have been involved in litigation with the various organizations of Scientologies, up to nine attorneys at one time. I don't have legal assistance. I've had some occasionally, thanks to good friends, but uh, by and large, I'm operating without any legal assistance of any kind. I was sued back in March of 1996 for allegedly stealing trade secrets of the Church of Scientology, their secret scriptures, and violating copyright law by daring to utter some of their secrets on the internet. Now, the reason why people have done this, I believe, is because we want to expose some of the, expose the secrets not to make fun of the Church of Church of Scientology or Scientology organization, or as I prefer to call them, the criminal cult of Scientology, but to just make it open disclosure for potential customers of this mafioso business. And if people choose to become a customer after learning the truth about Zenu, about uh, the incompatibility with uh, Christ, Christianity, and so forth, then they're perfectly free to become part of a criminal organization. I, I do not want to destroy it. I want to simply clarify its goals to the consuming public. The Church of Scientology uses the legal system to abuse and harass its opponents. Uh, they, they're, it's actually a brilliant trick. Like the, like the scourge disease HIV or AIDS, they've learned an in interesting trick. They've learned that if you subvert the mechanism that itself is charged with overseeing the criminal law, then you can get away with any kind of criminal acts you want. Just like the HIV virus subverts the cells which are charged with getting rid of disease. It's a brilliant strategy. It's extremely effective because what can a law-abiding person do to combat this? They can't do anything. The legal system crushes them. In the, uh, just this morning, I looked up the number of federal cases in the Court of Appeals that mention Ellen Hubbard, Dianetics, or Scientology. Now, not all of these are Scientology cases. Uh, some of them just mentioned precedent. Now this is the Court of Appeals, which means this is the only, the only those few cases which go on to appeal and are decided in a published decision are mentioned. So the number of cases involving Scientology at the district court level or at the ordinary court at Pinellas County are much larger. However, I counted 836 cases at the Court of Appeals level of published decisions that name specifically, explicitly, Scientology, Alwyn Hubbard, or Dianetics. Don't as underestimate the effect and power and influence that Scientology has over the legal system per, uh, and the people who they purchase in order to purchase the law. These 836 mentions represent a lot of legal money, a lot of money that they've spread around, a lot of money that lawyers know that they may get in their pocket if they just cooperate and conform to the and comply with the goals of Scientology, which is to clear the planet, remove conscience, and to kill people. Release their thetans, excuse me. In the Supreme Court, there are 56 cases that mention Scientology, Dianetics, or Ron Hubbard. That's the high court of the land. Just in Florida, there's 56 cases as well. One case I'd like to go into, the, you know, legal stuff is probably boring to most people, except unless you're being sued by them. I think it's illustrative of Scientology in general, and specifically eliminates the relationship Scientology has legal engine with Clearwater and Cape Cesaris. Some of you may have heard of it. It was decided in the Florida Supreme Court in 1986, November 26. Just for the record, the, uh, the site is, for, the authority is 498 South 2nd, 896. In the Supreme Court of Florida, it's the Florida Bar Petitioner versus Merrill G. Vanier Respondent. The issue was an attorney named Merrill Vanier. This decision upheld his disbarment 
from the Florida Bar for despicable acts against his client. His client? Gabe Cesaris. I just want to, I won't comment on the case, I'm just going to read three of the short paragraphs written by the judges of the Supreme Court who are not known to hyperbole, not known to exaggerate, not known for flowery rhetoric. The allegations against Vanier can be capsuled into one basic charge, that Vanier was an undercover agent for the Church of Scientology, the church, who used his position as a member of the Florida Bar for purposes contrary to the interests of his clients and to his oath as an attorney and to the Code of Professional Responsibility. Essentially, Gabe hired an attorney to fight Scientology. That attorney was an agent, an undercover agent for Scientology. It's the most basic violation of trust imaginable for an attorney. Absolutely shocking. As a result of discovery, the judges went on, the Supreme Court judges, in the seizure of documents from the church's Los Angeles headquarters, it was revealed that Van Eyre was an undercover agent for the church. So this is a finding of fact. This is not just speculation on the part of the Supreme Court judges. Just by the luck of a co-eval raid upon the Church of Scientology of Los Angeles, we discovered documents proving that Merrill Vanier betrayed his profession and betrayed his client who trusted him with his most innermost secrets to his attorney in order to personally benefit and benefit for the Church of Scientology. Now the Supreme Court concludes Vanier next argues that the referee's findings and recommendation violates his freedom of speech. It violates his freedom of religion and associational privacy by judging him on the basis of the conduct of the church rather than his own conduct. Now, the Supreme Court gets a little uh, sardonic here. It may be, as this argument necessarily suggests, that various church officials committed despicable and illegal acts. However, it is Vanier who is a member of the Florida Bar and before us in a disciplinary proceeding. In other words, they just mentioned that Vanier's own argument suggests that his crime bosses in Scientology were the basis. The evidence shows that Vanier voluntarily acted in a, as a spy and agent provocateur for the church and its officials who were attempting to destroy or subvert I remember I have to stop again here. These are solemn Supreme Court judges in robes making this opinion. They've had years upon years of experience. They're extremely well trained. They're not prone to exaggeration or hyperbole. And they use words like destroy or subvert the critics. Sound familiar? And that Vanier's conduct violated his oath and the code of professional responsibility. They upheld his disbarment. And it's forever. And that happened in 1986. It's just that this is just a typical Church of Scientology op. And I'm sure they could care less about Vanier. He's probably... Actually, I, meant, I, I saw his, uh, a person with the last, that last name in California still practicing. Uh, so I, I don't know uh, how they ended up. And th this is the kind of thing that Gabe didn't mention this morning, but this is the kind of harassment that he suffered at the hands of the Church of Scientology. And... Uh, Gabe is extremely brave, and uh, you know he doesn't go into a fraction of the amount of suffering he's gone into because of this. But he's still with us today, and, and uh, I think we'll be with us until these people are willing to listen to the truth, or if not, we're, the truth is going to come out regardless. Now, as I mentioned, the HIV analogy—they learned that one trick of uh, subverting the very system meant to charge with uh, making sure that they follow the law. They also do something which analogizes to dumping. Now, dumping in the technology industry is like um, if I'm selling steel in the United States for a, a dollar a pound. Say, I wanna, say I'm a Japanese company, I want to take over the market. I can make steel, it costs me two dollars a pound, but I, I decide to put you out of business. What I do is I come in and sell for 90 cents a pound, losing money in every pound I sell. But I might have deep pockets, and so I can afford to waste billions and billions of dollars until you're put out of business because you can't afford to sell it for less than 90 cents a pound. And when you're destroyed, your business is destroyed in America, then the Japanese company, of course, and I don't mean to pick on the Japanese, it's just uh, an example, raise the price up to $2 a pound and the monopoly is established. And that's called dumping, that's illegal. Well, 
the church, <laughs> church, uh, the criminal organization of Scientology is willing to waste money, they use legal dumping. Now what's legal dumping? It's when they, they don't mind if they spend, waste one or two dollars for every dollar you spend. So you can be a millionaire, you can be tens of millions, if they decide to destroy you, they will waste 10, 20, 30 million, whatever it takes to ruin you. However, even they have limits. Now, I'm just one of several litigants on the internet, and I, and I think the internet has changed the game a little bit. Uh, I'm not a rich person, in fact, I'm, I'm poor. And I don't have any resources. You know, there's not, it doesn't take much to destroy me. Yet I'm speaking here today, how can that, how can that be? How come they, I've been in litigation with them for four years, how can I be not be destroyed? Something's not working with their legal tech. Well, I'm a group, I'm not just the only one here, I'm a group of Keith Henson, Xenon Pernusis, and a, others on the internet who've been sued for allegedly posting their secret materials on the internet. And not all of us, uh, Xenon's not here because he lives in a foreign country, but uh, all, he's active on the internet still. Keith Henson is here and still protesting and not been silenced. For each of our cases, they've had to spend, because we're not rich and we don't have attorneys that have to eat up our money, they've had to spend maybe fifty, hundred, two hundred dollars per, per every dollar they spend. Well, even the wasteful dumping practices of the criminal code of Scientology cannot waste at that rate. And what a surprise, in the last three years, they haven't sued anybody else for internet crimes. What does this mean? Well, of course, if you ask them, well, we won, we got the legal decisions in our favor, and uh, so we're vindicated as a church and so forth. Well, more than ever, their secrets are available 24 hours a day. www.z.net, I had no idea whether this has their secrets or not, but sites like this exist. They're growing. They're flourishing far more than any kind of alleged expansion by the criminal cult. So basically, the Scientology organization lost the Internet. And I believe that as an analogy of uh, the, analogy, the, the analogy of the internet can also be the analogy for Clearwater. I think, obviously the internet's nonviolent. We can't shoot missiles through the telephone wires. And that, it was just getting out the truth. And I think just getting out the truth in Clearwater is going to beat them because they cannot stand the truth. And that's their incredible vulnerability. It's an Achilles heel. Just the truth. Just the smile on your face. You don't have to lie. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to do ops on them. You don't have to respond violence with violence, you don't have to do anything, just the, just the truth. And they cannot stop it, and it will beat them. Just to prove to you, I, re I reached some settlement negotiations with the criminal cult, and they've proclaimed that they beat me, but they have not gagged me. I'm going to read part of their secret scriptures now, and this is perfectly legal for me to do so, because it's fair use, and the Judge Fogel, in my case, has guaranteed that I am able to do this. By my act of reading this, I'm not doing it to make fun of it. I'm doing it because this is the kind of truth that new commercial prospects need to know before wasting their lives in Scientology and being killed. Data. One. The head of the Galactic Confederation. This is L. Ron Hubbard's own writing. This is from OT3. You only learn this after spending perhaps hundreds of thousands of dollars. No new member would ever hear this because you would run away from the church of the cult if you heard this. The head of the Galactic Confederation, 76 planets around larger stars visible from here, 95 million years ago were founded, very space opera, solved overpopulation problems, 250 billion or, or so per planet, 178 billion average, by mass implanting. Here, L. Ron Hubbard, this is, according to L. Ron Hubbard, the literal truth of our human history. He said 95 million years ago that aliens were brought to this planet, put on volcanoes, and nuked, and implanted with images that prevented their further progress. He caused people, to, and you'll find out who the he is, to be brought to Tegigak, Tegiak, which we call Earth now, and put an H-bomb on the principal volcanoes. His name was Zanu. He used renegades. That's all I'll talk about for now. I don't want to go beyond fair use. The very fact I can speak this, utter this, after the years of litigation, two and a half million dollars at least in attorney's fees that they've claimed that they spent on me, 
means that I won. Thank you. Any questions? Jeff. Is your legal case essentially done now? No, I expected to last for several more years. Go ahead. There are so many charismatic human people acting for figures, etc. Would you speak up, please? Why do so many charismatic kind of actors, sports figures, etc. get involved in this sort of thing? It's <laughs> so outrageous and ludicrous. I, I, I think I'll have to mingle at, afterwards at the edge, in the Edgewater room because I don't have the answer to that. I don't know. I don't know. Stacy. What's it like uh, being your own attorney against a bank of Scientology attorneys? Well, let me give you one example of what it's like. <laughs> and I'll do it through analogy. Last night, my house was picketed by a member of the Church of Scientology, my personal home where, my, where they knew I was gone. They knew my wife and my two little boys were there alone. They brought up the person and they stood in front and they told their neighbors that I was a religious bigot, that uh, you know I'm a child molester, and, uh, all kinds of accusations. My uh, my uh, wife Felicity told me when she called me 1:30 a.m. last night that she was afraid, and at the beginning the boys were afraid, but we had prepared for this because they had done this before. She she was afraid. She took out her camera. She took his picture in front of her house. She brought out this kind of data. Uh, news articles, Wall Street Journal, Post, brochures, and gave to the neighbors. After doing this, she and the boys were no longer afraid. So that's, 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 I was afraid at first, I'm no longer afraid. So that's all I like to answer right now. Thank you.